Okay, so it's in the news. Um, there is this rocket orbiting the Earth and it's going to crash down on Earth. And so the question is where, where is it gonna land? I mean, no one, no one knows for sure. And it's a really difficult situation to predict. And so what I want to do is to build a model in Python, numerical model, uh, for this re-entry situation. So really we're gonna deal with two forces. We're gonna deal with the gravitational force on the rocket and then the air resistant force on the rocket. And I mean, it, it can be pretty complicated, but if we break it into simple steps, we can do it. So I'm gonna work through this and it's gonna take as long as it takes. I'm gonna build the code. And I've actually already built this code before. I'm gonna rebuild it so you can see how to build it. Now, I just wanna point out who, who, would, who would this video be for? So if you want to model these things in, in a three-dimensional animation with Python, that's, that's, that's where you come. Okay, so I would, I would expect, I really aim this for the introductory physics college student at the calculus fit, uh, level of physics. So, um, you know, the science-based, I don't know, they call it different things, but calc-based physics one. Uh, if, if you're really excited, I think that uh, an algebra-based physics student could do this. Um, I mean, there's some vector operations that you may not have seen before, but that's okay. Uh, I think a high school student, if you're like super pumped up about physics and stuff, I think you might be able to follow along too. So I'm just letting you know where I'm gonna be going. Uh, I'm gonna use forces, I'm gonna use vectors, I'm gonna use the momentum principle, I'm gonna use the Euler method numerical calculation, and I'm gonna code it in Python. And we're gonna build a function for density, for the density of air, because we need to calculate that. Um, so, so let's just get going. So what I wanna start with is right here, a basic orbital model. Um, we need to start with, the nice thing about building models, you can start simple and then add things. I don't wanna have any air resistance. I just wanna have the earth and my orbiting object and then just get that working and then we can add on air resistance. So let me show you how we're gonna do that. Okay, turn the camera off. So here we are. So I have this gravitational force. This is the gravi the vector gravitational force between any two objects with mass. So I have uh, the mass of the Earth and the mass of the object right there and R is a vector between their centers and G is a gravitational constant. Um, it's, it's just, I don't need to write it down. The mass of the Earth, the mass of the object, and this is the magnitude of their distances squared. So this R hat is the unit vector in the direction of R. And so if I, I need that because I can't square a vector, and so I have to take the magnitude of the vector and then square it, and then so I need to turn it back into a vector. And that's gonna be super important in this case, right? Because we're gonna have our, our object moving all the way around the Earth, so we need to be able to take into account the direction of the force. And then the negative is just because it's attractive. And this is the force, this is the force on this object. There's also this object pulls on the Earth, but the Earth's mass is so massive that you wouldn't really even notice that. Now the other big idea is the momentum principle. This says that the net force on an object is its change in momentum with respect to time over some time interval if the force is constant, which it's not in this case but we'll be okay. And momentum is mass and velocity. So if I take this over some short time interval and I assume, I assume that the momentum is indeed, the force is constant, then I can say uh, P2, the momentum at the end of the time interval is the momentum of the, at the beginning of the time interval plus the net force, which we only have one in this case, times delta T. So this is, is that same equation. All I did was solve for the final momentum. So this says that if I know the starting momentum at the at some time interval, and let's use uh, delta t equals one second. That's what I'm going to use um, because you'll see it in just a little bit. We'll talk about that. Um, I feel like Hagrid. Remember Hagrid in uh, Harry Potter? Potter uh, if he doesn't, if when they're working on that uh, hippogriff, and he's like, "Well, we'll get to that later. We'll get to this later." But it's not, gonna, it's not gonna scratch you, it's not gonna attack you, okay? It's not that kind of hippogriff, it's just a time interval. So now I can also use the definition of average velocity, V average. It's a change in position over the change in time, and I, it looks the same as that. So again, I can solve for this and get R2, the position at the end of the time interval is the position at the beginning, plus I'll write this as P2 over M delta T. So P2 over M is the velocity at the end of the time interval, which is wrong. Really, I need to use the average velocity, but it turns out that this works quite well with this. So here's what we do. We can't just 
do this all at one step, right? Because uh, the force changes direction, the momentum changes direction. We're going to add air drag in there. That's going to change. Everything's going to change. Um, so instead, I break it into tall, small time steps in which I assume things are constant. And so the, the, here's the order of operations. One, calculate the force. Two, update the momentum. Three, update the position. Now I, I'm going to have, if I have a new position, I have a new force. So I start all over. And that's what we're going to do. Okay. Um, trying to think. Oh, now I want to start with a circular orbit of radius h. Okay. And then we're going to use h is 300 kilometers. So what, how do I know the velocity for a circular orbit? So let's, I need the initial conditions, right? I need to know the initial momentum and the initial position, or I can't update the, niche, the momentums and positions. So let's say it starts right here. And let's call this the, uh, the x, and this would be the y axis. And I need this initial p1 momentum. So I need to know that velocity. So if I look at this, I have this force, uh, fg. And then I have the velocity v like that. Those are both vectors. But and in that case, if it's moving in a circle, then this would have an acceleration towards the center of the circle. So I can say this force g mass of the Earth mass of the object over r squared as a scalar has to be equal to the uh, centripetal acceleration, which would be equal to m v squared over r. So now I can solve for the magnitude of v and put it up there. So I'm going to say I'm just thinking, I, I did this before, I did it in terms of omega. I'm not sure why. No, I didn't. Okay. So if I solve this for v, this mass cancels, that cancels that, and I get v equals the square root of g mass of the earth over r. So I can solve for this for my initial conditions. Okay, let's go ahead and jump over to the Python stuff and get this coded. And I actually already, I actually already got started because I was excited. Uh, so I jumped ahead. So I already picked some things here. So I picked uh, my my area of the rocket. I'm going to need that later because that deals with the air drag. Uh, this is the mass of the of the rocket. I just picked this and I may change it. I don't know what it's going to be. This is the drag coefficient. I'm going to use this later. This is the gravitational constant g. Mass of the earth. I looked that up. That's the radius of the earth and that's the altitude. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is to make the earth in 3D. This is awesome. Okay. I'm going to make an object called earth and it's going to be a type sphere. Its position is going to be at the origin. So this is, um, if you haven't seen this before, this is uh, GlowScript v Python. Uh, so it's Python code. And since it says GlowScript v Python at the top, uh, there's certain functions in there that make 3D things. So let's just run this like this. Okay, it's not done, but I, I built a sphere and I've, I click run, I get a sphere and it's in 3D. Right, so I can I can zoom in, I can zoom out, all that's cool stuff. I should name this, I guess. Uh, so, oops, what did I do? Oh well, okay, I guess we're starting over. Okay, so um, let's say a equals pi times uh, two point five squared. That was the radius squared in Python is star to star. I said c is. 0 0.8. I said g is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. I'm going to save it first. D orbit rocket with air drag. There. Now we'll have the same mistake happen again. Mistakes happen, people. It's okay. Um, it's like I'm like I want to be. I want to be the Bob Ross of Python. I know I'm not. It's it's fine. That's just what I want to be. Okay. So I have the mass of the Earth. Me is 5.972 times 10 to the 24th. The radius of the Earth is 6.371 times 10 to the 6th. I said h was 300 e3. Uh, the mass of the spacecraft was 200. Do I have anything else? OK, so then I said Earth equals sphere, position equals vector. Zero, zero, zero. This is the other great thing about VPython. It has vector objects built in. Sphere is uh, a thing, right? And it has certain parameters. A couple of those parameters that are important are the position, which is the location of the center, and the radius. So let's give it a radius of RE. And I'm going to run it. I'm going to save it. And it's not going to look any different. 
It looks the same as before because what happened was, yes, I have a giant sphere, but the, the, the environment kind of zoomed out to make it all fit. So that's, that's cool. Uh, and it still looks the same. And here's where something super awesome comes in. I'm going to say texture equals textures dot earth. Watch this. Check that out. Now I have the earth. See, all I did was turn my sphere into this mapping on top of it that makes it look like the earth. And that's just for fun. Okay. Um, okay, so let's do a couple of other things. Uh, I'll leave the, I'll leave that, I'll leave it like that. Okay, now I want to make my uh, rocket. I'll call it a rocket. And it's also a sphere. And remember, we said it's going to be uh, in the, in the x-axis. So that's at the origin. So this is going to be equal to the vector along the x-axis of the x-coordinates going to be the radius of the Earth plus h. And then the other coordinates are going to be 0. Now for the size, you know, I could, I could use a radius of 2.5 meters. But let's just do that. 2.5. I'm going to give it a color too so we can see it. Color equals color dot yellow, uh, comma. You can return, put a new line over here. I'm going to say make trail equals true. This will mean it'll leave a, tra leave a trail behind. It's not moving yet, but you can't see it. It's there. It's over here, but you can't see it because it's so small. So we need to make it uh, much bigger so that we can see it. It's not going to be bigger. It's just going to look bigger. Let's try 100 meters. I don't think that'll be big enough, but let's just see. No, let's try 500 meters. That's... Okay, I'm going to try one more, 1,000. And then if that doesn't work, I'm just going to keep going. I think, I think maybe we'll see it once. What did I put before? I know I did this before. I put the radius of the Earth divided by 40. That's what I did. Okay, let's do that. R E so giant. And it's not that big, right? But we otherwise won't be able to see it. There it is. You see it right there? And and that just shows you how close this is to the uh, the orbital height of something like this is super tiny. Oh, you can't see it. You know why? Because the camera's in the way. There it is. Should I turn off the camera? No, I'm gonna leave the camera on. Okay. So now I need to uh, set my other initial conditions. So I'm, I'm, let's do this. Um, let's give it like this. Rocket.m equals m. So what, what this does is uh, if I do a dot m, it makes uh, that a parameter of the object rocket. So then I could have more than one thing. And I should have done that with the Earth, but I didn't. Uh, now I need the momentum. So rocket.p is going to be rocket.m. Oh, I need to calculate this. So let's say v0 equals square root of g times me divided by re plus h. So this is that equation I just calculated, right? Yeah, g me over r. So that gives me my initial velocity so I know what that is. So then I'm going to say multiply dot this times the vector 0, v0, 0. So the momentum is going to be in the positive y direction with that magnitude. And that's what's nice about starting it at this location. I know it's on the x-axis, so the velocity has to be in the y-axis, y-direction. Okay, I think we're almost ready. t equals 0, dt equals 1, right? So I, need, I don't really need that, but I do need the time step. And so here, if I take a time step of one second, you know, I know that the space station takes 90 minutes to go around the Earth. So if it's 90 minutes, it is going to be a little bit different. Uh, but if it's 90 minutes, then... You know, you can think how it's not going to go that far in one second, right? Okay. So let's just do um, let's just do while t for right now. While t is less than how many? Let's do two thousand seconds. Let's see. Nine, let's do ninety minutes. Let's do more than that. Let's do um, two hours. So two times sixty minutes times sixty seconds. Right. That's two hours. Now, the next thing I need to add in here in my loop, so this is a loop in Python, right? So loops in Python, uh, you put the colon, and then you say everything indented, tab indented below that is part of the loop. So I'm going to add a statement here, rate 1,000. This says, um, you know, I want to animate this thing. So rate 1,000 says don't do more than 1,000 calculations per second. If I wanted it to go in real time, I could use rate of one. That would do one calculation every second, and that would make that thing move around in real time. But I am not patient enough for that, so we're not going to do that. 
Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate R. Yeah. Let's calculate R. So R is going to be equal to the, the vector location from the center of the Earth to the rocket. So that's going to be rocket.pos minus earth.pos. Um, so you could just shoot rocket.pos, right? Because the Earth is at the center. But I, I like this way because if the Earth wasn't at the center, it would still work. Um, also, remember we said the position is pos is vector so-and-so. So that means I can refer to that again. Rocket.pos is the vector location of the rocket. Earth.pos is the vector location of the Earth. Now let's calculate F. I'm just going to type in my equation. Negative G times ME times rocket dot m times unit vector r. That's built in to Python, norm r. I know I'm going fast, but one, kind of excited. Two, I mean, there's so many details that I don't really know which ones to focus on. If I, if I went through every single little detail, I think this would probably be a five hour video. It's already 16 minutes. I'm not even into air resistance. Okay, so norm is a built in function in Python that returns a unit vector uh, for that vector. And then I need to divide by the magnitude of r squared. Again, magnitude is built in, mag r squared. So there I just calculated the gravitational force. Now I need to update the momentum. So I'm going to say rocket.p equals rocket.p plus f times dt. So, and someone said I need to put spaces because it's barbaric otherwise. Do I need to do spaces? I don't like spaces. Okay, so this equation is really important because it looks like it cancels. It looks like the momentum cancels, but it doesn't because it's not. It's not an algebraic equation. This is a make equal to equation. This says take f, multiply it by dt, which is my one second. Add that to the momentum of the rocket as a vector, and then make that the new momentum of the rocket. So this updates the rocket momentum. This is P2 equals P1 plus F delta T. It's also P3 equals P2 plus F delta T. It's all of them. I don't need a whole bunch of different variables, which is good. Okay. Uh, note, you may be tempted to say, hey, what if I just, DT is one, I'll just leave the DT off. Okay, you'll get the right answer. But if you change DT later, if you decide to change it, problem. So don't do that. Okay, now I need to update the position of the rocket, R, and that's just rocket.pos. That is rocket.r. And that's going to be equal to rocket.pos POS, plus the momentum, which is rocket.p times dt divided by rocket.m. Now I need to update time, t equals t plus dt. And I think we're ready to rock and roll. Maybe we should save this first. What do you think? Do you think it's going to work? Or do you think I made an error somewhere? Because errors happen. Okay, it's saved. Running. It's working. Say there's... It's the circular orbit. You like that? Okay, but we're going to get way better, right? We're going to get way better. So now what I want to do is to add in um, air resistance. Okay, so let's switch back over to the paper and talk about air resistance, and then we can add it into this model. Okay, so let's say, and this is just a model, okay, and this is not the best model for air resistance, but it is a model. So here's, let's say, um, here's my spacecraft, here's my Earth, and here's my spacecraft, and it's moving this way. But it's not completely out of the atmosphere. The atmosphere, uh, the density of the atmosphere decreases. So it's really high down here, and then it just kind of gets less and less and less as you get further up. But when those air particles collide with the, with the spaceship, the rocket, there's going to be a backwards pushing force. So this is the momentum, and this is F air. So our normal model for the air drag force looks like this. F air equals negative one-half rho A C V squared V hat. So this says that uh, the air resistance is in the opposite direction of the velocity. That makes sense. It depends on the magnitude of the velocity squared. Now this is the part that's kind of tough because at super, super, super high speeds this model doesn't work. Uh, this is just a model. Okay, This is not real life. It's just a model. Uh, but it works. It'll work well enough and it'll be fun. right? So 
That's the velocity. This is the drag coefficient. Drag co f. This is a parameter that's based on the shape of the object. So a sphere has a has a smaller drag coefficient than a block, right? Because a block's more less aerodynamic. So it has more drag on a block. Uh, a is the cross-sectional area. So this would be, um, if, if you're looking at a sphere going through air, this would be the, the area of a circle, the same radius as a sphere. And this is the density of the air. So normally, uh, the density of air is 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter on the surface of the Earth, but we're not in the surface of the Earth. And that's the problem here. We have to, we have to find how this density changes. Oh, and 1 half is 1 half. But here's the game plan. It's the same as before. I'm just going to use this, F net, plus or minus 1 half rho A C V squared V hat. So now I'll calculate the net force with this extra force added onto it, and the other steps are the same. Okay, But we do have a problem. How do we calculate the density of air as we move higher and higher? Because each time that I get lower and lower, my density value is going to change. That's going to change my air drag force. Okay, so fortunately, uh, NASA has some data on this. Let me switch back over here. I think I'm there, there. Um, this. Yeah, this is NASA. Okay, so this is a site, and I'll include the link down below. Hopefully, I won't forget. This is a model, right? This is just a model for the density of air as a function of altitude. So uh, they actually break it into three parts. This is the very, very high. Yeah, for greater than 225 kilometers. And this is for less than uh, 25 kilometers, but greater than 11. And this is down to the Earth. Okay, so we have three pieces of this density model. Uh, so we have this temperature value, uh, which is just used to calculate the density. Uh, this is p-value. Um, we have this thing, I don't even know, it's just some empirical model, right? But if it works, it works. Uh, and then we have this. So I need to uh, build this as a, I could calculate this each time, but instead what I want to do is make a function. I want to make a function that calculates, that I give it the height, right? Because in H, and it returns the density. And then I can do that, when, and I can do that wherever I want. Okay, so let's do that. So I, I've already have all these numbers in a side sheet, so I'm gonna switch away from this and we'll just make a function. So let's just go up and make the function up here at the top. So in Python, we can make, make a function. I'm gonna say def uh, row h. So this, I need a name that is not already used, and so I'm using roh for row, the density value, and then I'm gonna pass a value h to it. I shouldn't really use h. Let's use, um, H, because I'm using H somewhere else. Let's use HT. That's fine. Okay. Uh, and then let's just <clears throat> put a comment in here. This uses the height, returns density of air. And then I can say, um, based on this model, just in case we forget. I'm copying the URL. In case I ever come back, you know, you want to leave a note if I come back based on this model. There it is. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is to see, I'm going to break it into pieces, right? I'm going to do the, the lowest level first. So I'm going to say, if H is less than 11,000, 11, then I'm going to use that first model for uh, the, the density. I'm going to say, uh, I'm just typing the equation as I have it right there. T equals 15.04 uh, minus 0 0.00649 times H. And that, that's the T value. And then the P value is equal to 101.29 one times T plus 273.1. So that's converting the temperature to Kelvin. Um, divided by this, I don't remember, 288.08, 288.08, 288.08, 288.08, 288.08, 288.08, 288.08, 288.08, 288.08, 288.08, 288.08, 288.08, 288.08, 288.08, 288.08, 288.08, 288.08, 288.08, 288.08, 288
and all of that raised to the 5.256 power. I mean, I, I don't know where it comes from. It's this experiment, right? Um, and I'm using, oh, that's the p-value. Okay, that if I'm at different, if I'm at different heights, I just have a different p-value. Okay, so now if h is less than 2,500, then I'm going to recalculate p. So I don't have to say if it's between these two values, right? I, if I calculate, if it's let's say the value is 20,000, I well that is no, that's not. So if it's less than that, h is that, p is that. Let's see. If h is, so let's say h is 1,000, then it's going to use this following function. Hmm, I need to say this then. If h is less than that and h is greater than 11, greater than or equal to 11,000. Okay, so there. Then I will say t equals negative 56.46, that's just straight from the thing. And then P is gonna be 22.65 times the E to the, which is EXP exponent, 1.73 minus 0 0.123157 times H, there. And then finally, if H is greater than, let's just say else, else, T equals negative 131.21 plus 0 0.00299 times H. And then P equals 2.488 times T plus 271, 273.1 divided by 216 Point six. All of that raised to the negative eleven point three eight eight power, and then I can calculate the density, and just I'm just going to return that value. So the density is going to be equal to p divided by zero point two eight six nine times t plus. 273.1. Okay, let's just double check and save that real quick. Let's just see. So there's my, I oh, that's the high one. See, that's weird. That's a positive exponent. That's a negative exponent. Whatever. That's what they say. It's NASA, right? It can't be, can't be wrong. It can, but, and then there's my value of rho right there based on the P and the T. Okay, so it looks like it's good. Let's just test this. Right, I said that uh, if the altitude is low, it should be 1.2. So let's go down here and say, print row uh, oh I didn't know oh, I have HT right so this is HT HT and this is HT caught that T T I'm gonna say it every time HT HT that's it Okay, so let's print row of 100 meters. Let's see what it does. Error. Unexpected token um, in line 16. P equals 2.488 times T plus that divided by, oh, Object. Okay, so this is a problem. I know that this is a problem with Python 3.1. If I go to 3.0, okay, 7.36028. That's not right. Hmm. Seven. That's too high. Okay, let me just copy my function from before and see. I think that works. And see if it works over here. And this one has. Um, I did type it up before. Let's just see if that works. Okay, that one worked. Okay, let's just, 
I don't know. I typed an error somewhere. I'd want to spend all my time on that. That looks like it's worth 1.2 uh, kilograms per cubic meter. Yay. Okay, so now down here, I can do this. I can add in my air drag force. So the first thing, I'm going to actually gonna calculate the velocity. So I'm going to say rocket.v equals uh, rocket.p divided by rocket.m. That way I can use this velocity in my equation. I don't, you don't know how many times I've actually just used v and I never updated v and this weird stuff happened. Okay, so there's my gravitational force. I just have to add minus 0.5 times, oh, I need to calculate h too. Okay, let's see, so h equals uh, r minus, it's gonna be mag r, because that's a vector, minus re. Right, so that's the height of the spacecraft above the surface of the Earth. So over here, it's going to be uh, 0.5 times rho of h times a times c times mag of rocket dot v squared. And then I'm going to put the, I get scared over here. So I'm going to say uh, norm rocket dot v times. So there's that. That's now I didn't. I don't need to change anything else. Okay. Let's just see. I, we probably won't be able to see what ha anything that happens, but let's just see. Is it getting any closer? Okay. Not really. Okay. So let's do this. Let's do while h is greater than r e. And I'm going to give it an initial velocity of a little bit less than circular orbit, 0 0.9 times that. Let's just see what happens. Something bad happened. While h is greater than, while h is greater than, what the heck happened? While h is greater than re. No. While R, it's not. That's what it is. While eight, so let's say while mag rocket dot POS is greater than RE. Oh, see, it crashed right away. See? Okay, let's, let's make it go a little bit faster, 0.99. Okay, there it crashed over there. Okay, so we, we're getting some crashing. I'm, I'm excited about this. Okay. Oh, can you see? Yeah, you can see. Okay, let's make a graph. I want to make a graph of um, the altitude as a function of time. Uh, okay, so to make a graph, because we're done, right? You can play around with this model. I can make it go faster. I can change the, the air parameters and stuff like that. Um, there's a couple things you can do for homework. You could go ahead and plot. Uh, I'm looking at the time here. You can plot the density as a function of altitude just to make sure that function is working. Uh, but I, I think it, it is that it is working. But I want to plot the uh, altitude of the rocket as a function of time. So let's go down here. Let's, we can do it right here. I can make a graph. So in Python, I can say t graph. That's the name of my graph. Is an object of type graph. Uh, I could give it a title. Let's say title equals rocket. D orbit. I like D orbit. Uh, then I can give it an X title. X title, but you got to spell it right. Title equals time in seconds. And then the Y title is going to be altitude in meters. And so I, I don't want to plot the X or Y position, right? Because it's going around in a circle. I want to find that height above the Earth. That's why I'm using the altitude. Okay, so that just makes the graph. It doesn't plot anything. So let's say a uh, graph. I'm going to say F1 equals G curve. Color equals color dot blue. I always like to do that. And then down here in my code, I'm going to say F1 dot plot. And so this will give me my X and my Y values on my graph. So I want my X value to be time. 
and my y value to be h, which I did calculate. I think that'll be it. Let's just see what happens. Okay, so um, you can see how long it took to deorbit in this case. Let's make it stay in orbit for a little bit longer. One of the things we could do is to increase the mass, right? If I increase the mass of the rocket, then the, then the air drag is gonna have a less and less uh, impact on it. Another thing I could do is, is decrease the drag coefficient. But let's say this is 400 kilograms. I really just pick stuff, I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, that's cool. I, I, got, I got it before where it would like bounce back up. Um, let's see, let's do, let's do, let's increase this a little bit more, 500. It's still doing the, kind of the same thing. Let's print this final location. Um, Let's print the time, right? I, I, it's hard to print the location. I could print the angle. That might be good, the angular position of it. I could calculate the angular position of it uh, and, and deal with theta. And theta tells me where on the Earth it lands, right? So let's do, let's print, let's do both. So let's print, uh, let's say theta is going to be equal to arc tangent of the, let's see, the x, the y over the x. So it's going to be um, r dot y divided by r dot x. So r dot y is the y component of the, that vector r. And so I'm going to print t and theta. Let's just print them both. Okay, so the time of 256 seconds, a theta of negative 9.67257. Now, Let's change the velocity by just a tiny bit, okay? Let's change this 0.999 and see what happens. So in those two numbers, remember, 2.563 and negative 0.9672. Let me take a picture of that because I'll forget. That way I can, we can check it. Okay, so I'm gonna run it. Oh, that one did pop up. Oh, look at that. It's not even, uh, it's too close to the orbit. It's, it's orbiting at a non, so if you have a non-circular orbit, it non, uh, then it's elliptical orbit, okay? So it's going to kind of uh, go up and down because it's conserving energy in a way. Uh, this is really great. I'm really excited about this. Look at this. This shows you how hard it is. All I did was increase the initial velocity by, uh, nine one thousandths right and then I, I get this and you see here's the problem right because when it gets closer to the earth down here you're increasing the drag force let's change this to another value like nine five something like that i mean it would do this uh, up and down if there was no air drag see it didn't it didn't make it it didn't make it an up and down okay but I do get a significantly different values for the angle and for the time. So you see, here's the problem, right? If I have this situation where it's really difficult to predict, and it's even worse than that, because if you think of my density model is very, very basic, but in fact, the density of the Earth, the Earth's atmosphere goes up and down when, when it gets warm, the, the density goes, the air expands up and it changes, all those parameters change. So this is, that's why this is such a tough problem. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop there. Uh, I think you have enough here to play with, and you should. You can come up with your own basic homework questions for this and, and solve some things and use it for your algebra-based physics class if you want. Definitely would be a great thing for your college-based, calculus-based physics course. Um, but that's enough. Uh, I hope you have a good time, and I will talk to you later.